Why, well, good morning, friends. It's a fine morning and a good time to be here. Amen. I'm happy to be alive this morning Amen. and to be here with the congregation again. There's so many things can happen in such a short time, and we don't know what time that we're going to be called up on to answer up at the big court, and we want to be prepared at any time <laughs> so we can have peace. And I'm very grateful, as I said, of course, I was here Sunday night and was speaking to the people. I preached Sunday night. And I want to thank Brother Roberson and all you all t- called in about enjoying that message of Sunday night. We have all things. Yeah. And um, so um, I sometime I didn't think I was going to speak, just come down and looked at Brother Neville and his, his throat kind of like a bumblebee down there. And I thought, Poor brother, if he sure calls on me tonight, I'm going to help and do everything I can. Because I know what that is when you're tired and hoarse and he preached hard that morning. And so I I spoke for him Sunday night. And um, so we're, we're, I thank you very much. Now there's many requests they say for prayer. And so let's just remember them first, all these requests. Let's bow our head now. Our Heavenly Father, it is written that we should enter thy assemblies with thanksgiving upon our hearts. Make our requests known in the assemblies of the saints. And we have many of them this morning, so many that we don't know how to call them to your attention, but you know them. And there's many that was not spoken of. You know them also. So we pray with all of our hearts as we did... Last Sunday night, for Sister Shepherd's, Brother Shepherd's uh, child, there when in the re- come, we come back, the Holy Spirit said she does not have no polio. She'll be all right. What a satisfaction we have when we hear from you. Now we're asking this morning that you will grant these requests for the sickness for the bereaved home, for the loved ones, and all that's been spoken, Father, we pray that you will remember each one. And I offer my prayer and the prayer of these people before thee gathered together and sent to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear us, Father, we pray. Amen. I want to thank each and every one of you all for your prayers for me while I... You know, I had a little explosion down on the range down there, and Satan tried to kill me, and, and uh, of course, he couldn't do it. <laughs> Look, God wasn't through it. <laughs> so he just can't do it until it's all over. When God's finished, then I'm ready. But I, my good friend, Brother Woods, down there at Sister Mercy's of God, he just found from here down <laughs> and not from here up. With about a five or six ton explosion that close to my face like that. Never hurt me a bit. So it scratched my face up a little. So that, well, it's all gone now. Just one little spot left there. So I want to thank Brother and Sister Dow over here, Brother Brown and them, who uh, understood by telephone conversation that they gathered together a group of people and prayed for me. And uh, that is something, does something to you. You know... You pray for others and everything, and then when you find out that somebody's praying for you when you need it, that Amen. means the whole lot. And I know many of you didn't call in or anything, but you did just the same. And it means a whole lot to us. And that's the reason that I, it didn't hurt me. God let me be well. And so I'm very grateful. Now, I have some announcements just before we dedicate these little fellows. Um, now... Tonight, the service at the tabernacle, and uh, all you that come here at the tabernacle, come right to the service here. And um, so we're, I'm going to speak for Brother Ruddle tonight up here on the highway, one of our visiting brothers. And then as soon as they get back, if I have another night, I want to go to Brother Junie um, Jackson. Jackson, and then uh, that Brother Sellersburg, we owe him a night up there. And um, so we want to go up to see him, the brother over at Utica getting in these nights as we can. This week I leave for Green Bay, Wisconsin, as you know, to the regional convention of the Full Gospel Businessman. Next Sunday I'm at that high school 
that uh, up there that I was the last time there. I forget the name of that high school auditorium. What is it? Mither? Stephen Mither. Yeah, all right. High school auditorium. And then Monday, I'm in a convention over where I held the discussion with that ministerial association um, in Chicago the last time there. We're in that place for a, a farewell meeting to Brother Joseph Bose, who's going to Tanganyika, Tanganyika, I believe he calls it, in Kenya and Yoruba, and, and through there, making arrangements for my own coming fall meetings and, um, in Africa and through South Africa. And then we ask you to remember us in prayer in these meetings. And we return back, and I don't know where I have time to get it another day at the tabernacle or not, before we go then up to North Carolina, uh, and then from there to South Carolina, and then all the way over to the Cow Palace and Los Angeles at South Gate. And um, there's where I hope to get to go and see Mr. Weather be the one that made the rifle that the shell exploded in. He didn't have the head space backed off too much and let the shell push back instead of go forward. Is an old rifle. I just sent to him. He had it bored out and then, and made it into a different kind of a rifle. And I put the shell in it, raised up to shoot. And, well, it blowed the gun 50 yards around me like that and melted it in my hand. The barrel went out on the 50-yard line. The boat went plumb back behind the deer cage, 30, 40 yards behind me. And pieces of strap and fluid knocked bark off of trees and everything else. So that was that close to my eye, just about one inch where it went off like that. And if it had blown, and that gun will stand 6,900 pounds of pressure itself without blowing. So you can imagine how much was on it to do that. And remember, if it had blown that, it could have blown my head and shoulders too, you see. But there was the Lord standing there. It didn't even let it hurt me. It just scratched me across the face and a little strap and I went in and blew the side of my eye. Made a ring around the sight so it didn't touch the sight where the strap and I went in. One of the big pieces that stuck in the skull went around the eye didn't get in the eye. So, oh my. Yeah, not long ago, you remember, I told you he met me in the room and said, do not fear for the never failing presence of Jesus Christ is with you. Yeah, yeah, so that proves it that yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, a doctor that looked at my eye in Louisville, he said, they wrote back to Dr. Sam Adair down here, our friend, and said, the only thing that I can say that the Lord was sitting there that morning with his servant to protect him, or he wouldn't even have head and shoulders left. Uh -huh. So he was really good to me, and I appreciate that. It brings me a little closer. It always makes a little different. And then two days after that, three days after I was going on to my meeting where I had scheduled in Canada... The man, without knowing anything about this, called me back and had to postpone the meeting. See, I'd have been on the road out there. Thing had happened like that, see. And so then call back, and I have to take the meeting, the Canadian meeting, and that will be in July. The last week's in July, and then I'm going on to Dawson Creek, then to Anchorage, Alaska, the Lord willing. Now, in none of these meetings, I have any leadings to go to, not a one. But I came to think of sitting here all summer, sitting around here, and people dying everywhere. I got to sow seeds wherever it is. No matter what, if it don't come up, as the birds of the air get it, if whatever it is, I want to sow seeds because you give me something to sow. So I, I'm going to sow the seed anyhow. Now, we have a time here that many people, what they call baptize little babies in the Christian faith. Well, that's all right. If you do that, that's up to you. Of course, they don't really baptize them. They just sprinkle water on top of them. But to me, I like to stay with just what the Bible said do. Therefore, just what the Word said, that's what I want to do. Just whatever it said. And now, I, I don't find any place in the Bible, in the Old Testament, they brought the children for fleshly circumcision, the little males. And the mother offered an offering for purification to turtle doves or lamb. But in the New Testament, the only place that I can find to commemoration of this great service, of it was a dedication they brought.
infants to Jesus, and he picked them up in his arms and blessed them. That's what the parents did of his day. And his life was an example of what we should do. Amen. These things he did for an example. Now, we just take the little ones, and they bring them to us, and we just hold them up to God. And ask God's blessings up on them and pray a prayer of dedication from the mother and father to God as they present their child. And, and dedicate them in the name of Jesus Christ until they're old enough to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And now he said, whatever we do in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. So, so that's what we wish to do. And now while the sister will play... Softly, this little song, sister, we have here, bring them in. And the mothers and fathers that's got these little babies that's never been dedicated to the Lord, if you'll bring them now. While the congregation, we sing softly to them now. Bring them in, bring them in, bring the little ones to Jesus. I love these little fellas. There's something about them that's so sweet. I guess this is strictly not that. It's all right. Say, I'll tell you, man, but you want to put that beat in the ear. I'll tell you, this is your friend. Oh, she knows. Say, this is the I'll tell you, man. This is what I'll tell you, man. What's his name? Jonathan Davis. Jonathan Davis. Make him a man like Micah in the Bible. Yes, Grandfather. 
Give to him the blessings of God. Bless his father and mother. And make him an inspiration uh, here on earth. A great stepping stone for the cause of Christ. And now, hear us, Father. I present to you from the arms of the father and mother to the arms of God, little Micah Edwards, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Bless you, your father and mother. The of God. Oh, I just love it. <laughs> Amen. Just everyone, that, each one is the prettiest baby in the world. There's just no need. <laughs> when I brought little Joseph home, that was honestly the ugliest little fellow I ever seen, but his mother and I thought he was a doll. <laughs> but that's the way it is, you know. That's the... We just think that. I'm wondering this morning, uh, uh, some of our members here, there was a... a now, this eye has Belladonna in it, which blurs a lot. But Sister Nash uh, asked about Brother Nash. I wonder if he got all right. Uh, is, are they here? Oh, well, yes, he's here. Praise the Lord, Brother Nash. That, that's good. Now, Sister Edwards, is she here? The Or Sister Shepherd that had the little sick girl... Uh, She's all right now. Fine. Um, I got the news, and the thing was just about five minutes. To, I had people out of town for interview. I run in the room and prayed, and they said the child was taking polio. Arms and legs are stiffening. And I run in to pray and said, I'll come after church. Tell, told Lois to call back and tell the lady I'd be there after church if she wanted me to call me. And when I went in to pray, the Spirit said, said no polio. She'll be all right. I come down. Uh, well, we all add prayer here at the church. Yes, amen. That just settle it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Praise the Lord. Prayer changes things. Say, he isn't here this morning, his son in law. Last Sunday, last time I preached here Sunday week, there's a young fellow sitting here. I kept looking at him. I thought, I ought to know that chap. And come to find out, he was my old schoolmate uh, son, Jim Poole. Why, we was raised together from little boys up. He is the one that I had the shotgun accident with that time and then later on had one himself. And a friend of mine, I trust that I can lead that boy to Christ. I tried his daddy so hard. I believe I will yet. <laughs> uh, bring him in. Uh, I hope I can leave that young fellow. He had a... I looked around at him. He looked like he had a fine... What I call it. Now, I don't make this remark to anyone else. But vibration of his spirit. A good feel. I believe it wouldn't take too much to lead that boy to Christ. So let's pray for him. That's right. Amen. And brother... Uh, see, somebody else that was sick or something that I'm trying to think of. However, we pray for all... And when, sometimes when you send a request, remember, as soon as I get it, my wife's in a building somewhere, I think, so she knows as soon as I get a request, right straight to my den room, I go to prayer and stay there till I feel something. I just don't give it up. The other day when Sam, Dr. Sam, picked that stuff out of my eye, he was trying to, and it's hurt him so bad. <laughs> He had put a towel on my face that I can't see my buddy's blood. He said, I, I was bathing. <laughs> he, said, he said, I just can't do that and work on it. See? And so uh, he pulled that out. And the next day, he was in the hospital. So I prayed for him, and he came out all right. And then the second day, his wife, they didn't even know what was wrong with her. So she was taking polio. So he said, and, so, and prayed for her. And now she's home well. So we got in the room, Doc. We went into office deep. We pulled the door together and said, Now, Brother Bill, I'm going to ask you something. Someone said, Will you pray for me and Betty? I said, Let's, let's pray. <laughs> so he is the one that the Lord showed the vision for to build a clinic. You, you remember the story. If you ever doubt it, go by and ask him sometime. <laughs> yeah, just said, Just let anybody come in. So I've told it to 10,000 people. Brother yes, Brother. Uh, And you said through the anointing of the Holy Ghost, they call you Bill. I know the man. I know him very well. And after we left here, his name is Isaac. They do call him Bill. 
<laughs> yes, sir. See, his actual name is Isaac, but they call him Bill. The Holy Spirit makes no mistake. <laughs> it's the infallible. Now, this, someone was talking and said, I'm, I'm 53, and thir- about 31 years I've been behind the pulpit. And I have seen him in tens of thousands of things. Yesterday I was down, way down in southern Kentucky, right on Tennessee border, and um, I was sitting in a boat with Brother Dalton, who the Lord gave all of his children to him. You remember the morning here when he started out? And um, he said, Brother Branham, said, I guess it'd be hard for you to estimate. I said, oh, Brother Dalton, tens of thousands, times tens of thousands of things like that. He said, won't you try to write a book I said, of it? I said, oh, my, Brother Dalton, you go across this boat, you're an encyclopedia, uh, uh, just uh, volumes of books of what I've seen the Lord do. And not one time has he ever failed. Amen. Not one time, but perfect each time. Praise God. I uh, see, I believe now, if I'm not mistaken, Brother Shepherd's girl with a kind of an orange-looking dress on. I think that. I stopped by her the other morning. She was walking down. And I thought I might have the wrong girl to pick up, so I took off. So that was me to stop, sister. And I, I thought it was Brother Shepherd's girl, and I picked her up because I thought maybe his car might have broke or something. We was going to get Be- uh, Becky, and uh, I thought it might be the wrong girl, but now I see he's sitting with him there, so I, I believe it was the right girl. So that was me that pulled up there and then pulled away. <laughs> so um, everybody love the Lord Jesus. Oh, hey. Wonderful. That's just fine and then. Amen. Well, Brother Willard, we're just glad to have you in, and you look pretty good, too, best I can see you. <laughs> we both kind of hamburgered up around the face. I looked like I'd been hit with a handful of it, and I seen Brother Willard that night when he was asleep, and honest to goodness, he looked terrible. But you look awful good this morning, and we give thanks and praise to God for it. Uh, Amen. You know, the devil can't kill us till God says, come on. Then we want to go, don't we, Brother Willard? That's right. Until then, he's just trying in vain. That's all. Praise the Lord. The Lord Jesus is our help and our refuge. Now, here I talk along here when I've just got about six hours to preach this morning. Amen. Amen. Glory. Now, we uh, never notified, didn't send out no tickets and things because I would already announce I wouldn't be here, but just to come down and help Brother Neville and get to see Amen. you all again and have a little time of fellowship. And last uh, uh, Sunday night, uh, Brother Roy Roberson, I don't know whether he's in here or not. I can't make out enough to see that. I'm sure he called me up and tell me about the message. And someone called and said, I was wondering when you talked about God gave us all things. See, he did. He gave us life. Try to buy it. He gave us love. Try to buy it. He gave us joy. Try to buy it. He gave us peace. Try to buy it. No way of buying it. You can't buy it. Then I said he gave us death. Someone called and said, Preacher, I wonder where you was going with that. <laughs> said I thought, uh-oh, here's Brother Bram tied himself that time. Not when the Bible says so. See. The Bible said he gave us death. Now, what can we do with death? You know, Paul coming to death, he said, Oh, death, where is your thing? Death don't control us. We control it. That's right. All things is given to us. And then I gave the illustration of how that Israel on the march to the promised land. They had never seen that land. They know nothing about it. They just had a promise of God. There was a land. And it's full of milk and honey and good and, and a great place. And it was, they never had seen it. Nobody had ever been there know anything about it. But they had the promise of it. And by faith, they sojourned through the desert. And when they got right to the borderline, they had a warrior there by the name of Joshua, which means Jehovah Savior. So he crossed over the Jordan into the promised land and brought back the evidence that the land was there. Amen. I like that. And it was a good land. Two men packed one bunch of grapes. It was a good land. So... um, He brought back the evidence that the land that they were going to possess was there. 
Now, to the church. We are journeying to a land of immortality. A land where there's no death. A land where the dead's raised up. And we had a great Savior in our camp. Uh, Jesus means Jehovah Savior. Beloved. Amen. And he crossed the Jordan of death over into the other land and come back and brought the evidence Hallelujah. <laughs> that we live after death. Amen. <laughs> so where is death at? And then he gave us all things. Amen. Now we have the earnest of our inheritance. In so much, now listen close. I don't like preach on that subject, but it just feels good to me right now. See? Amen. That we have the earnest of that, for one day we walked in sin, and after being baptized in his name and raised with him in resurrection, we've been brought out of sin, never no more to want to go back again. Amen. See? We are raised from sin with the evidence that we have, we are potentially in the resurrection from all death. Amen. See? Hallelujah. If we can raise up from sin by Lord. faith in Him, and there is sin, who would want to go back to the garbage cans of oh, sin Lord. again? Amen. See, Amen. we pass from death to life. Amen. See? Hallelujah. And that's the earnest. Amen. Oh, <laughs> that's the earnest of the complete resurrection. Amen. All death. Physically and spiritual, we don't overcome spiritual death. Because we pass from death unto life. Amen. And as Elijah went down to Jordan one day and struck it with Elisha, and it parted back and he crossed over, he come back with a double potion. Amen. And when we strike Jordan with Christ, we got one potion. But when we return, we're coming with two potions. We got eternal life, resurrection from sin, now in righteousness with the Holy Ghost. And then on the return with Christ, we come back with both physical resurrection and we already got spiritual resurrection. We have a double potion of it. <laughs> Always a type of Christ in the church, Elisha and Elisha. Oh, I don't want to get started on that. My, my, my. We'd never get on this six-hour message here. No. Yes, my, uh, meat on the bone, brother. <laughs> Still annoying. Oh, aren't you glad? See, we don't have ain't no bother no more. Uh, Death is nothing. We got it. It's ours. Hallelujah. It can't control me. I control Amen. it. How? Amen. Through Him. Amen. Who made me an overcomer because I've already overcome death. Amen. How did I do it? By believing on Him. Hallelujah. Death's in sin. Unbelief. I'm not an unbeliever. I'm a believer. I've raised from that thing resurrected. Well, it's the earnest of all my complete physical, spiritual resurrection, everything. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You get it? So we do have death under our control through Jesus Christ, who's Amen. overcome death, hell, graves, sickness, Amen. sorrows, everything else, Praise triumphs over all. And we are now risen with him. Setting in heavenly places, spiritually speaking, in Christ Jesus with all things under our feet. Amen. Even the physical resurrection is under our feet. Because uh, we're in Christ. Does, you get it. If you do, raise your hand. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. good. As long as you get it, that's fine. Okay. Don't let us keep keeping it in your mind, see? We have passed from death unto life. Physical, spiritual, every way and everything and all things belongs to us now. Amen. While the world out here is saying we're crazy, and yet yeah. the whole earth belongs to us. Amen. How are you going to inherit it? When, as I said, Abraham, see, he was in the promised land. God gave it to him. Lot was taken by some renegade outlaws, took away, his, that was his nephew, all right, everything was in that land belonged to Abraham. So he wasn't a warrior. He never did fight. He didn't have any warriors with him. He had some servants. But when he seen that something, the devil had come and robbed him of something that was a promise to him, he armed his servants and took an arm himself. He didn't know how he was going to overcome his whole company of kings, yeah. just a handful of servants. 
But God told him how to do it, and he divided himself and slaughtered the kings and come back triumph. Amen. Why? He laid his faith upon God's promise that everything in that land was his and Lot was part of it. Amen. That's right. It was Amen. part of the land. <clears throat> oh, my. And there he met Melchizedek after the battle was over. Could you just see Abraham coming up the road? He didn't Amen. know he was a warrior, <laughs> but he knew then he was. <laughs> Yes, sir. And he met the one who gave the promise, Melchizedek. Now, Hallelujah. let's read out of the book of Amos. I'm going to speak this morning, not six hours, or oh, I hope not, see, on, uh, on a subject <clears throat> that the way of a true prophet. And tonight, the Lord willing, I'm going to speak on Letting off the pressure. And uh, so, um, the, the Lord willing. Now, I am known to be a critic, but I, I, I am not critical of only anything that's wrong. But I, we should criticize wrong. Now, if you're going to turn your recorders on now in the room, uh, all right, I want to read now from Amos, the third chapter. Uh, the, yes, the third chapter of Amos, <clears throat> just a portion of it. Amos 3. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquity. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord has not done it? Surely the Lord will do nothing, but He reveals His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? His eyes must have got narrow. As he stood that morning on the hill, just beyond the city of Samaria, I can see his Study hands as it moved through his gray beard. The hot sun was shining down. He wasn't too glamorous to look at. How different from the modern evangelist today. His clothes was rugged. Shaggy-looking beard. And look down upon that city of Samaria, his eyes getting narrow as he looked. He wasn't much to look at, but he had, Thus saith the Lord for that nation. It's perhaps... A lot different for this oncoming campaign that the Lord had sent him to Samaria for than what our modern evangelists would be. He wasn't equipped for such a revival as we would think he should be today. But remember, he wasn't a modern evangelist. He was a prophet. 
He didn't care about the modern equipment. He had, Thus saith the Lord. He didn't care how he looked and how much fashion he was dressed like, whether his hair was combed right or whether anybody looked at him or not. He had the word of the Lord. That was his full objective. Bring that word of the Lord. Who was this fellow? Yep. It was Amos the prophet. Rugged individual. But he knew where he was standing. He knew what he was doing. He was a true prophet of the Word. And the reason he had come to this city was because the Word had come to him. And when the Word of the Lord comes to a true servant, he must go, regardless of circumstances or regardless of difficulties, he must go anyhow. Whether he's prepared, whether he feels like it, whether he wants to, or whatever more, he must go anyhow. It's God speaking. And he must carry this message because it's uh, he never goes for foolishness. Amen. He never goes for money. Amen. He never goes for popularity. Amen. He only goes in the name of the Lord. Amen. For one thing, Amen. he's got a, a mission, and he's sent of the Lord, and he is the Word of God. Because he's carrying the word of the Lord. That is a true prophet of the Lord. My text is the way of a true prophet of God. This great, fearless uh, man of God prophesied in the days of Jerome, the second. I've got part of his history wrote out here before me. He prophesied about 13 years of his campaign. And Jerome was, Jerome the second was just about as smart and able a man as Israel had had for some time. He was a man that had brought prosperity to Israel. Israel was all flourishing. But he was something wrong with him. He was an idolater. And I'm kind of reading this the other day I kind of thought that was pretty fitting to today. No matter how smart a man is and how much he can do and how much prosperity, if he gets away from God, he's an indebtedment to the nation. Away from God and His Word. I wonder if it isn't fitting to us today. Someone who loves to sit on television and show how smart they are, how much brains they got. But what if they got enough to take, thus saith the Lord? He was a smart man, all right. Israel was in a backslidden condition. Her preachers, her priests, and also... Her government had all left the word of the Lord. Now, they didn't believe that. They believed that they were with the word of the Lord. But there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is the ways of death. Why was they wrong? Uh, Why could a man believe that If they were wrong, a whole priesthood of man, thousands of preachers and priests and kings and governors 
all who professed to be worshipers of God, and yet all of them were wrong. Then they didn't need a king for prosperity. What they needed was a prophet. Because the word of the Lord or the interpretation of the word of the Lord comes to a true prophet. Sometimes you can see what his way is then. The pretty rugged way. When all the priests and all the preachers and, and, and all the diviners and, and the government itself against him. But yet the word of the Lord comes to the prophet. And that alone. He has the right word. Although he had the same Bible they had. But the Word was to him. God was vindicating that he had the Word. They had the greatest buildings and the religious systems and so forth that they ever had. Altars built everywhere and and all kinds of of things. But still, they were a million miles from the Word of God. I think myself the picture would fit very good today. As I read this book of Amos, you must read it when you go home. All the government priests, all of them had left the Word of God. I would just like to read another portion of Scripture here I got to show where they had done it. Now let's read the second chapter and the fourth verse just a minute. Thus saith the law, for three transgressions of Judah and for four I will not Turn away the punishment thereof. Because they have despised the law of the Lord. That's the word. Despise it. And yet they thought they had it. And have not kept my commandments. And their lies caused them to error. Now they had the word Bible. But the lies that they had joined with it had caused them to error, after which their fathers have walked. See the reason? Now they had had error because if they had put their own translations or interpretations to the Word. And I thought it was fitting to today. That so many wants to put their own idea to the Word. And we get in a mess. What a rebuke from God this prophet had. Now, Amos was God's prophet. A true prophet. Any man that ever reads about Amos knows the boldness of that fearless man of God. He's considered one of the minor prophets because he didn't stay very long. But he certainly laid the axe to the root of the tree. He was one of the most fearless of the prophets. And he come with the anointing. He come with thus saith the Lord. He knew what he was talking about. Because the anointing of God was upon him to bring the right interpretation to God's word to them. Amos come from the country, the wilderness, to the city of glamour. He had never been there before. He was a country boy. Way back out in the wilderness. While he was back there in prayer, God had met him. And had told him of the wickedness of this glamorous nation in which he was a part of. And Samaria was the capital, one of the capitals at the time, and of the reign of Jerome. And when he stood there that morning at the top of the hill, walking in with his old crude country clothes on, perhaps dust and mud on his feet and words, slapping that old ragged garment night after night. And I don't know, he didn't have bathtubs in that days. It might have been a few days since he took a bath. 
But that don't hurt the inside of the man. Too much day putting on the outside. Not enough on the inside. We're so concerned about whether we bathe each day and our hair is groomed and our clothes changed and everything. And then let the inside go anyway. Where are the same old sinful garments taking the soul up? What creeds and dogmas never search it and wash it in the word of the water of separation from the things of the world. As he stood that morning looking over the hill of that glamorous city, full of modern things that he had never dreamed there was such a thing. Israel was in its height. It was in an alliance with all the nations around it. Very glamorous. The women dressed to the spot and the, and the man, and they were pleasure-stricken running races and Olympics and everything going on. No wonder his eyes narrowed. Not with the glamour of the city, like some tourists would do, coming into New York or Los Angeles, seeing the half-dressed women, the man carrying on, and the sin. Some friends of mine a few days ago was coming up from a fishing trip just below a Bible college, of a great famous Bible college. And they're laying in the road, in the weeds, where young girls, half-dressed in young boys, perhaps students from the college, drinking and carrying on horrible. Now, such carrying on as that tickles the appetite of a many American who calls themselves Christians. When they look down into Los Angeles, or I've not watched them on the plane when we come in to Los Angeles, they've never been there before, or to Hollywood, or, or to Florida with all their neon lightings over the, flat, the palm trees. Oh, they would powder their nose new and fix up the makeup. They were thought it was the most glamorous thing they ever seen. And see the well-groomed and dressed walking on the streets. They wanted to get out there and see how tight they could wear their clothes or twist up and down the streets. When they think that that is something wonderful. But those God-anointed eyes of that prophet didn't narrow because of the glamour like some tourists. But on the moral corruption to a people who was called to be blessed of God. Lies didn't look at the glamour. They didn't narrow because of glamour. It was because of the, the, the indecency and the corruption of a people that had been called to be the chosen of God and would act in such a way as that. No wonder, he said, the lion roareth who will not fear. God spoke and who can keep from prophesying? Amen. He's seen the corruption, the decay. That's what he was looking at. That's when he's seen all of that. It didn't attract him. It sickened him at his soul. Why, he was a prophet. He knew what God had promised to bless and what a blessing was and how people act with the blessing. And the devil had perverted in his day from what a real blessing was to a, a, a moral decay, a blessing to tickle the eyes and appetites of unconverted people Amen. to the will and way of God and God's way of life. How typical it is today how preachers can stand in the pulpit and look upon sin and corruption of this world and see people and are doing and acting the way they do and then just bless them because they're a member of their church or a denomination. It's more than my soul can understand. Amen. 
When God speaks, prophesy. Amen. If the Spirit of God strikes a real prophet of God, he'll cry with the word. I don't want to be critical, but who can hold their peace? Who can stand to look upon such a thing and profess to be a servant of Christ and not call it out? I don't care what a denomination would say or what any church would say. That's the reason I don't belong to them. They kick you out the first thing. But God's Word comes first. If you're a messenger, you've got something to say. And if you say anything contrary to this Word, you're not a messenger from God. You're a messenger of the covenant of some denomination or some theory. But a messenger of God has the Word of God. And our friend this morning, as we look at him, he had the word of God because he was a true prophet of the Amen. Lord. Amen. Now, they thought they had the, the interpretation to it. And thought, well, sure, look what we're doing. Now, <clears throat> the thing of it is, we've got him standing there on top of the hill this morning. Uh, looking off down to the city. Shaking his head, looking. His eyes narrowing. Taking his sleeve and wiping the sweat from his face. Dust. Hot sun shining down upon his bald head. His beard hanging down. He's rubbing it with his hands. He didn't see glamour. He saw sin. It didn't please him. It sickened him. Why would he not say, me an Israelite, look how my country's prospering. How could he say that when he was a true prophet of God, knowing the results? And what was going to become of such a thing as that? Let's stand him on the hill today and let him look down. Let him look in Jeffersonville at the people who call themselves Christians. Let him look anywhere in America for our people who call themselves Christians. His God-anointed eyes were narrow again. His hands are twitched in his beard. Why? You don't see the glamour and prosperity that the world sees. He sees the going away from God. He sees the moral decay of the people. He sees the backsliding of the nation. He sees the rottenness in the church. How could he do anything but narrow his eyes and long to get into it so he can tear it to pieces? What if some bishop had met him up there and said, Now, are you the prophet of the Lord? Now, we'll tell you what you can say and what you can't. Do you think he'd listen? What if it said, Come join our organization now and we'll help you in your campaign. Do you think he'd listen? <laughs> I couldn't imagine that. Out of a man like that. No. He was sent of God. He didn't have to have their cooperation. He had God's Word. God's anointing. God's appointed time. He was coming and thus saith the Lord. Amen. That's the true prophet. That's the way he travels. He travels with nothing but thus saith the Lord. Would this glamorous city of Samaria, this self-styled, high-educated Israel, these fine, polished preachers and priests, receive this little unknown fella. Probably his grammar was very poor. Come from a poor family in the wilderness. Left home, called of God, went into the wilderness to study God and His Word and become a prophet. Lord, born him that way. Prophets are born. A messenger for the age who God by foreknowledge knows the age and has his agent there. A call out sin. Could that glamorous city receive him? You think those women would have paid any attention to what he said? 
You think those priests would have listened to him? Why, no, sir. He had no recommendation with him from any organization. He couldn't say that the Pharisees sent me. Neither could he say that the Sadducees sent him. He didn't carry any credentials. He didn't have any fellowship card from any group of people. He had no forerunner to fix up a, his campaign. There hadn't been all the Pharisees that had a union meeting and a, and a ministerial breakfast and got everything together to um, uh, fix his campaign up and knowing that he was coming. He was unknown to them. Amen. He had no fellowship card. He had no credentials. He had no recommendation for man. But he had the saith the Lord. Amen. That's the way of the true prophet. Amen. He had the saith the Lord. If he had the saith the Lord, it's so far different from our man-made schemes here. Amen. That's all he needed. If he come this way, he'd come in the name of a church. If he come from this way, he'd come in the name of the Lord. Amen. So a true prophet always comes away of the name of the Lord. Amen. Always he comes in the name of the Lord. Now, he couldn't show fellowship cards, but he, he had the Word of God. And that's what God had sent to the people. Now, the people had formed themselves organizations. They had different sectarian groups, and that's what the people had formed. But he, Amos didn't have that. He just had, thus saith the Lord. That's what he had. I'd imagine those priests of a morning have a little, on the Sabbath morning, have a little uh, prayer and so forth, and a little dedicational services, and, and went back and talked a few things on great Moses that one day lived, and a great somebody else that someday lived. But all oh, the days of that's past. Now, you people know our new president, our new government, and our, all we've got, and talk on a few things like that and go home. But here come a man not caring for that. Amen. Amen. Come with thus saith the Lord. See, that's the way of the prophet. No cooperation. Know what was facing him. Know that everything would be against him. Know that they'd reject him. They'd turn him down. But he was coming in the name of the Lord. Jesus knew that Calvary was facing him, but he come in the name of the Lord. Amen. See, that's the way of the true prophet. He had the word of the Lord for the nation. But the true word of the Lord was foreign to those people. Amen. Yet they thought they had it. I hope this gets down deep. Yeah. They thought that they were so pious and religious that the real Word of God was a foreign thing to them. That's the way it is today. The true Word of God it made manifest is a foreign thing to us, lots of Pentecostal people. The real interpretation of the Word, yeah, man. the real woes and curses, yeah. the real blessings of God is a foreign thing to many people who call themselves holiness. Church members, Christians, it's a foreign thing to them. They don't know it. Mention it to them. Never heard of such a thing. And yet their organizations grow and prosper, getting bigger and bigger members all the time and more organizations added every year. Yeah. They thought that anything that come to them had to come out of those sectarian groups. Certainly they wouldn't receive him. Neither would they do it today. Amen. They had longed for God. That God was able of these stones to rise up Amen. true prophets to God. Hallelujah. God's able of the backwoodsman. 
He's able to raise up these stones, man that'll stand for his word and prophesy in his name the truth. Lay the axe to the root of the tree and let the chips fall. I don't care where he's got cooperation or no cooperation. But that's the way of the true prophet. Some people think he's got it easy. They don't know what they speak of. He wasn't brought into town by carriage, sitting upon fine harnessed horses, tossels, and the high priest standing out there with big high things on their heads bowing to him. The honorable doctor so-and-so is coming. That would have been some organizational setup. Like the king of all of them come, he'd come like come to a stable. In a barn, a cow barn. Never come in pomp and glory. But he come in the humility of a baby born in a barn. Amos didn't come. The word of the Lord, because he was the word of the Lord. Amen. Any word of God, it ain't the person, it's God. Amen. Jesus said, it's not me that doeth the works. He said, you're a man making yourself God. He said, then if I do not the works of God, don't believe me. Amen. But if the works speak themselves, believe the works if you don't Amen. want to believe me. Amen. Amos was God's word walking down the road. He walked in crudely, not in the passions of the world. It come in the power of the Spirit. Amen. That's the way the word of God comes. Amen. Not in an organizational creed. Not in a sissified something in the pulpit. Amen. But it comes in the power of the Spirit Amen. to manifest God to the nation Amen. and to the people. It's a difference. How much difference? Now, it's realized, forgot long ago, that God is able to of stones to rise up true prophets. They didn't have, their organization didn't have to raise up a true prophet because it perhaps couldn't do it. Because it would be, be an organizational prophet. Amen. But God raises. Amen. God takes what He wants to. Amen. He takes nothing usually to do His work. Shows that it's God. But man's all puffed up and thinks he's something and God can't use him because he's too much of himself. So what's the matter of the Christian church today? They think they know something. The Bible says when a man thinks he knows something, he knows nothing that he ought to know. The trouble today, we got so much self, so much hypocrisy, so much education, so much religion, and know nothing about the salvation of the Word of God. That's the pitiful part of it. Yes, they forgot that God was able of these stones to raise children unto Abraham or raise up true prophets of the Word. They don't have to come out of some certain school. God gives them their schooling. Amen. They don't have to have four degrees in college. They don't have to have their Bachelor of Art and, and their doctor's degree and so forth. They don't have to have that. God takes anything He wants to and puts His Word in them. Amen. How does He do it? He manifests and proves it. They couldn't say what seminary Jesus come out of. He didn't have any. What school is he from? He didn't have any. But what did he have? He had God. Amen. And he was the Word. Yes. They couldn't point back to some school. And God never did raise a man out of a school. Amen. Go down through history and find out where he ever did. <laughs> he doesn't. He takes something from somewhere else Amen. that's got nothing, no hopes for it. Then he brings that in and places his word in it and manifests himself. That's what he was doing here in Amos. All right. Now, Amos' word was vindicated by God in the day in their own days. God vindicated Amos' word to be that he was had the word of the Lord. And if he would come to us right now, do you think our nation and our people would receive a man like that? 
Do you think the Baptists would receive Amos? The Methodists? The Presbyterian? The Pentecostals? The Catholics? No, sir. No, he certainly wouldn't. Let's for just a moment transport him and bring him here just a minute and find out if he would or not. Let's just see whether he would, whether uh, our churches would receive him today or not. The first thing he would do, he would disagree with every organization because it's contrary to the word. <laughs> yes, sir. He would condemn our whole setup. That's right. Every doctrine, every creed, every denomination, he'd condemn the whole thing. I just imagine, I can see some of these Pentecostal presbyters saying, well, glory to God. If he, well, we wouldn't have that man in our town. And what do you think the Presbyterians and Baptists would do? Why, that ignoramus, we don't want him around our country. He's nothing but a, a crank. They'd sign a paper to put him in prison if they could, get him off the streets. Amen. But you think you're going to keep him there? Oh, no. You can't cage the Word of God. You know that? It'll come forth anyhow. Prison bars opened one night when they tried to cage him. A light came in and delivered him out. Oh, he, he would certainly disagree with our setup. All right. What would he start doing? Tearing it down. Why? He's a servant of God. He would go straight to the foundation to start his campaign. Right straight back and tear every creed off of it. You go back to the foundation. What is the foundation? On God's Word. Right. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my Word shall not. Amen. So you tear every denomination, every creed, every doctrine out of it. So it's always you'd blast it into eternity. Amen. You think the Pentecostals would receive him? No, sir. Uh, Baptist, Presbyterian? No, sir. Nazarenes, Pilgrim Holiness, they'd hate him. Early. You think they'd go out and meet him in a, a limousine and bring him into the city? <laughs> they'd pray for the sun to scorch him up there. They'd set up a barricade to keep him out of town. While there'd be more ministerial meetings around over the city you've ever seen in your life, keep that crank out of this city. But yet he had thus saith the Lord. <laughs> See, that's the way of a true prophet. He'd be despised, certainly. He would go straight to the foundation for his campaign. He wouldn't need, he wouldn't say, Now, I want all you Methodists to come in now and help me. I want you Baptists. I want all you people around here, all you Pentecostals. You claim that you're the last group that God's going to call. I want you all to come to me. And I want you to support my campaign. How do you baptize? What's the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Those questions. But be thrown in his face. And when he come back with the Bible truth, they'd turn him down. Amen. But that's the way of a true prophet. Amen. He's got all that to confront. See? Certainly, we wouldn't receive him. No, sir. Our, our, we would have none. We'd have none of his campaigns around our, our country. No, indeedy. Well... We wouldn't have him, no, sir. But he would come and bring the church back to the Word. Amen. For that is the foundation. Anybody Amen. lays on any other foundation, it's sinking sands. Amen. Upon this foundation alone, God builds his church upon the doctrine of the apostles. As I was saying the other day, someone talking about, um, uh, about purgatory and give references to many... Uh, like St. Francis and St. Cecilia, and uh, she praying for certain people and out of purgatory and gives such an authority as that. That's unscriptural authority. Amen. It's people who does not have an authority. Amen. The apostles had the scriptural authority. Amen. Amen. And if it's contrary to them, it's a lie Amen. as far as I'm concerned. I do believe in a purgatory, but I believe it's right now. You purge your own soul. Purgatory means to purge. When you see you've done something wrong, get out there and clean it out of you by confession and crying and fasting and praying. 
Someone even laughed at me when the Lord came here not long ago, gave me a vision. I'd always wanted to see about binding that serpent. I always wondered how to, how I should step out like that. When I, that's what I've warned all my life. Then I began to fast and pray. I said, what'd you do that for? I said, in there, he said, I was not sincere enough. After you come down, I want to purge myself. Amen. Not wait till you die and let some priest try to purge you. Purge your souls. But see, they took it out of the authoritative word and put it over in the hands of some man-made dogma to bring money into the church. Because they look at worldly things, the worldly church. Great powers in the world, political powers. But God looks to His word. And any word that's contrary to God's word is wrong. As far as I'm concerned, it's a word or nothing. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He would go straight to the foundation. He'd tear the thing to pieces. He would have to. He couldn't do nothing else if Amos is here today. He couldn't do nothing else. For remember, he is a true prophet of God who the word comes to. He couldn't do nothing else but go back to the Word. No matter if all the Pentecostals in the country gathered around him and said, Sir, Amos, we believe you to be a prophet, but you're off of the Word. We want to straighten you up. He'd stay with the Word. Amen. There is nothing else he could do because he's a prophet. He didn't need their cooperation. He's got a message to give, and all the Father has given me will come to me, and he's going to preach the Word, and he's going to preach it just like it would be in the Bible, and Amen. therefore we'd turn him down. Right. No matter what, he, the Word of God comes to the prophets. The interpretation of the Word, the right interpretation. Israel always got out of line and God sent him a prophet with signs and wonders to interpretate that Word. And how did he know? He said, if this prophet speaks and it comes to pass, then that's right. He vindicated his prophets that they were right. Jesus said, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. This you'll know. These signs shall follow them that be. Amen. Now, how can they claim to be a prophet of the Lord and deny the very word of God? Amen. How can a man baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost them titles and deny the very name of Jesus Christ Amen. when there's not a scripture in the Bible to support their theory? I may be hard and critical. But it's time to get that way. Amen. That's right. True. How can the people claim themselves to be Christians today and run an eye tear to everything and women with bobbed hair and wearing shorts and smoking cigarettes and running to picture shows, any kind of an old show and carrying on? Tell me that's the Holy Ghost. Don't you never tell me that. You, you make God sick at his stomach. Amen. Right. Amen. If there was such a thing could be done. I'm sure you understand. Call yourself such as that. How can there be such a thing? By their fruits are known. He would blast and condemn every bobbed-haired woman. Amen. How could he do anything else? He's a prophet. Amen. And that's the word. Amen. You'd say, you jazzy bells. Amen. He'd get rough with them. Why? He's a prophet. Amen. He'd have to stay with the word. Amen. Right. You think they'd stop? No, sir. They'd say it's a fanatic. He's bad as that old Paul was in the Bible. Woman hater. Amen. You're the bunch of imposting so-called Christians. No matter how holy you try to live, that don't have one thing to do with it as long as you deny God's Word and don't line up to it, you're a sinner, Amen. an unbeliever. Amen. That's what he'd say. Amen. He wouldn't lay the, lay the axe right to the root of the tree. He wouldn't spare nothing. Amen. He's a prophet. And that's the way of a true prophet. Amen. They stay with that word regardless of who it is, if it's her own mother Amen. or daddy. Amen. Makes no difference. Jesus did. Amen. Wouldn't even as much as call her a mother. Amen. She wasn't. Amen. He was God. 
God don't have a mother. But would then who's his father? <laughs> You'd bless and condemn him. He'd condemn every denomination. Because there is none of them built on the Word, I can't find one of them. And as soon as they denominate, they're against the Word right then. So how can the uh, prophet bless what the Word condemns? Yet he don't want to do it to hurt his brother, but yet he's got to do it because he's a prophet. And he's a representation of the true Word of God and don't move from it in no way at all. Precept on precept and line on line. See you know what I mean? The way of a true prophet. Somebody says, Lord, I wish you'd make me a prophet. He doesn't do that. No, he doesn't do that. He would condemn every immoral act of the churches. These bunco parties and all these things that they're having, card parties, soup suppers. He'd condemn every one of them. He'd blast them into hell where they come from. Amen. Think you'd receive him? No. The church today wouldn't receive him. Pentecost receive him? When he'd walk in there and say, you bobbed-haired bunch of Jezebels, don't you know what thus saith the Lord means? Walk out here with a little skinned up looking dress on, don't you? No, you're guilty of committing adultery every day with hundreds of men. Amen. That's what he would say. And you'd say, well, that old fogey, the old bald-headed, gray-looking feller, get him out of that pulpit. Let's see the trustee board deacons. Get him out of here. Well, you bunch of miserable hypocrites. Amen. 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 Then call yourself. We are. We belong to this group. We belong to that group. You're the devil, your father, Amen. or he's the one that denies the word. Amen. Say, I spoke with tongues. Then bob your hair. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says it's a, it's a common, common thing for a woman to pray with her hair cut like that. Yes. Then call yourself a Christian. Amen. Shame on you. Crawl off in a corner somewhere. Get right with God. Amen. Put on them little old shark clothes and get out here in the yard and stretch yourself out when you know good and well you're committing adultery with a hundred men every day. He said, Jesus said so. Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her. Amen. She was the one presented herself and you did it in your... Where you, if you're dead to the things of the world, you've raised from that, as I said at the beginning. You turn your head in shame, your air eyes narrow upon such a horrible thing of sin instead of look at women to lust after them. You man to do a thing like that and call yourself Christians. That's what he'd tell you. I'm trying to take his words this morning. It would be his words. For if he remember he's a true prophet, he'd have to stay at that word. I'm just quoting his words. That's all. Because if you brought him, he is the word, then here's the word itself. You may not have the man, but you got the, his word. Because he'd have the word of the Lord. Every man made doctrine, he'd condemn it. Such as baptism in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. He'd throw that thing plumb back into eternity. He'd condemn it so there wouldn't be a smell of it left. <laughs> yes, sir. How many, of you, how many of the church this morning would receive him up on that? <laughs> then they, this Jesus' name bunch, they'd, they'd say, oh, we'd take him on that, and then your organization. He'd blast you right on out with it. That's right. You're bobbed-haired women, and you're putting up with it. That's right. You're a man. The way they do an act. That's right. A lot of people say it's good to be a prophet. It is. If you're ready to sell out everything to the world and stay with God and with His Word. Mm. No, we wouldn't receive Him by no means. Our denominations today, we certainly wouldn't have nothing to do with Him. Listen to Him. Blast it. He said the very God that you claim to believe in, He'll destroy you. What would it do about that? The very God that Pentecost believes in 
from the very immoral acts and the things that they're doing and permitting to be done, that very God will bring judgment upon them organizations. Amen. Amen. Exactly what Amos said to them. Oh, they said, we got Abraham, we got, we got this, we got the law, we got priests, we got prophets. Oh, brother. Now my eyes narrowed as you looked up on them and blast that word into them. Yes, sir. Sure, they wouldn't receive him. No, sir. He said they'll destroy him with your man-made doctrines. That's what he'd tell you today. He'd say the same as he did then. He said the very God that you're building churches to, perhaps paying millions of dollars. The very shrines that you're building to Jehovah that you claim that you love, that very God will destroy you because you're rejecting His Word. Shrines of the day. very God that America claims to serve will bring judgment upon the nation and destroy it. I hope that gets so deep that you'll never wiggle out of it. The very one that you claim that you love and with your own man-made dogmas and immoral life and decay that you got in you away from the Word of God will destroy you someday. That thus saith the Lord. Amen. Nothing else left for them. Line up with the Word. Preach the gospel to them. Cross the nation. Tell them the truth. The ministers fuss and scream and carry on. The men condemn the organizations, turn you out. The women shake their head and wouldn't let that hair grow out for nothing. Where are their clothes just exactly the same year after year? There's like pouring water on a duck's back. Amen. Then you claim you love God, he said. Jesus said, you tucked your traditions and made the commandments of God of non-effect. Amen. That's the way of a true prophet. Amen. See, it's not an easy way. It's not what everybody thinks. It can be jump up and down and scream and everybody patting you on the shoulder. Then that's a sign you're not a true prophet. Amen. That's one of the very signs that you haven't got what you're talking about. Amen. When they ever pat him on the back, unless they had an axe to grind. Why do you turn around and condemn them? Right. Couldn't pat Amos on the back. You couldn't pat Elijah on the back. He didn't stand for that stuff. Amen. No, sir. He told them the God's truth. And if heaven is so great and where we're going to, then if we can't line up with little bitty petty things, how are we going to line with the Spirit there? We've got to line with the Word. And that's the way of the true prophet. So we're tearing the pieces to say it. He's got to tear a nation to pieces with it. That's right. But that's the way. He blasted all mine. You know what he said to him? The tumult, if you notice here. He said, it's not in your government, it's in you. That's what he said. <laughs> Tomorrow's in the church are form of godliness. That's what caused the trouble. The reason communism is sweeping the land today, it's not because of communism, it's because of the church. It's because of the people. The day they call themselves Christians, they sing like angels, train voices and speak with such eloquence like they were archangels. And disbelieve God's word like devils. Amen. That's right. Sing like an archangel. Dress like a I don't know what. And deny God's word. A man, a preacher in a pulpit. That'll stand there and be called Dr. Reverend. And ask him that the Bible speak baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and he'll laugh in your face and take Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. Then call yourself a child of God. Amen. Women knowing that the Bible condemns them to do certain things and bob their hair and act like the world and wear immoral clothes and things like that, and they'll constantly do it anyhow and speak in tongues and jump up and down and shout and have old lady societies and sewing circles and send missionaries to the field. <laughs> it's become a stench in the sight of God. Yeah. And thus saith the Lord, he'll destroy the whole thing. Hallelujah. He will. It's not an easy thing, but that's the way of a true prophet. Amen. Blast it out there and say it whether it hurts or not. John was a true prophet. 
He said, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Amen. That's the way of them. Sure. The troubles in her. Sing like angels, dance like devils. <laughs> Out your dances, carrying on, card playing, racetracks, Pentecostals. Going to the places of amusement. Picture shows crowded with them. Every place. Any kind of an old play or anything else, they go right down there and races and everything else and call themselves Christians and go up and shout and speak in tongues and take feet washing the communion. Why? It's, it's, it's a, as a dog goes to its vomit, the prophet said, so do they. If that thing was of the world, had to be kicked out of you while you returned back to it again. <laughs> right. Out on the streets, twisting, they call it. Rock and roll. <laughs> Bob and hair. Wearing shorts. Oh, my. Call themselves Christian. Could you ever... No, I better not say it. That's why I condemn them. If I'm going to stay with this word, if this word comes to me, I'll stay with this word. This is what comes to me. The word. Condemn it. Claims to be led by the Holy Ghost and do such things. Could you imagine a woman being led of the Holy Ghost, let her hair be bobbed? Amen. When the very Holy Ghost condemns it. Amen. Then what kind of a person is the Holy Ghost? Amen. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Could you imagine a preacher standing in the pulpit and any man challenge him to show him one place that anybody was ever baptized using the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost and laugh in your face and call you a fanatic but baptize in the name of Jesus Christ and say he's led by the Spirit. And say he's got the Holy Ghost. Will the Holy Ghost deny his own word? No. <laughs> you see? I hope you get it. <laughs> I don't know how much time the next blow up may get me. But I'm telling you guys, I'm going to be standing right there at the word. When I meet you under the judgment, I'm going to be standing right with that word. <laughs> That's what I believe to be the truth. <laughs> no, you don't do things like that and then have the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Went to a minister's wife one time, sitting up there with a dress on that's horrible looking. You say, you ain't got no right. I have got a right. That's the word. Preach it all. You bypass those things. A lot of sissified preachers because you haven't got the adopt. Maybe you haven't even been called to preach in the first place. And that's but a true servant of God will stay right with that word. Amen. Right. Amen. Minister's wife sitting there all squeezed up in a dress with earrings hanging on and makeup Amen. on his short bobbed hair. When Amen. God condemns the whole Amen. thing as filth. Amen. And then saying, you got the Holy Ghost. Yes. I was preaching here in Phoenix not long ago on something like that. And the minister's wife sitting on a pulpit with one of these boyish bobbed hair all kinked up. And with a dress that she couldn't even keep her underneath skirts from shining. She couldn't get down over her knees. About four or five inches above her knees sitting up there. Jumping them down, leading songs. I blasted it just as hard as I could. Amen. Of course, he won't invite me back. I don't expect you, but he knows what's right and wrong. And I stand at the judgment. It's not on my hands anymore. And go off and say, a man, so called teacher, which I don't say, but he isn't, made a remark the other day before some of my friends at a certain city I've been into. You know the brother. And this brother come in, he said, uh, well, he said, we had Brother Branham here once, a certain city in, out west. And this man said, oh, Brother Branham's a good man. See, you know better than to throw anything on a character. He said, Brother Branham, but don't you listen to his tapes because it'll get you confused. And it happened to be one of my friends and I said, just a minute, sir. I was confused until I heard the tapes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the difference. I couldn't understand how a holy God would put up with such things as that. As you all do. Yeah. Same person, another one with him, stood in a certain place not long ago and said, Brother Branham is a prophet. He can discern things and things like that. But said, I don't listen to his doctrine because he's not right. The insanity, the uncouth, 
expression is that. Don't you know that, though? If it is, a, I'm no prophet. But if the Word of God is true, it comes to the prophet. The Word of the Lord came to the prophet. They was the one who interpreted the Word. Then you see, you don't, it don't even make sense. Just to hide behind some petty denomination. One of these days will break and mold and perish in hell. Amen. But the word of God will endure forever. Oh. Upon that rock, I build my hopes forever. Amen. Upon the word of the Lord. Amen. Let everything else sink. If I lose every friend, everything else, our friendship's in Christ. My hopes is built on nothing less than Jesus' words with righteousness. Hallelujah. When all around my soul gives way, then he's all my hope and say. That gun exploded the other day, and I seen I thought it was dead. Had a peaceful feeling. I looked around, oh, well, this is it. What good would a denomination do me then? What good would an organization do me then? I'd have to stand under the fiery judgments of God to be judged by this word. Though I may have to scorch and bend and twist and pull apart many people, but I'm hoping to make get the genuine kernel out of there how the Word of God in there and build a soul for oh, eternity. Right. Let God put it in His hands and build it to an obedient child. How could, how could a man led of the Holy Ghost do such a thing as that or a woman with the Holy Ghost do such things as that? No, He's holy, and if His life's in you, you are the same. You'd be just like him. Israel, as we thought because they were prospering with their alliance with others, that was God's okay upon it. Now, you know, we think that today. I talked to some man here not long ago in a hotel a few days ago. Big man in religious realms. And they said to me, God proves that he's with us. While we growed last year, Brother Brenham, I forget how many hundreds like that. I said, that's not one bit of approval. <laughs> That's right. Prostitution increased last year about 30%. Did that show God with prostitution? <laughs> that argument is no good. No. You can't do it. No, sir. God stands with His Word. Any other man will stand with His Word if He's honest. All right. They thought because they had an alliance. Now, here we'll get in just a moment on the government affairs. Our nation has turned down the Word of God, yeah. just like Israel did. They turned down the Word of God, and their people, their priests and prophets and so forth, are prophesying good to them. And uh, what can we do but prophesy wrong because it's contrary to the Word? Yeah. She's doomed. Our great beloved nation, based upon the our experience of our forefathers, then get back to what they had. Sure, Israel was a great nation. Look at their forefathers, but God didn't spare them. That old bald-headed prophet was throwing the word to them. And it happened just exactly the way he said. Read your history here and find out if it's not right. It comes to pass just exactly the way he said it. And he condemned them, yet them standing there, holy priests with holy garments on, sprinkling this, and wouldn't move a hand this way or that way because it was something this way or tradition or something. Jesus said, you're your father, the devil, and his works you'll do. And they took him and condemned him and hung him on a tree and killed him. That's exactly right. God raised him up again. <laughs> yes, sir. No, they would not. We would not believe uh, uh, Amos today. Not at all. And... Today, we have made an alliance. We got what we call today, we think it's God's okay because the, our organizations are increasing and, and everything's going the way it is. We think that's God's okay upon it. You know, they've joined up, I believe, by two or three more million Protestants. And Catholics has went several million more. See? They think that's God's approval of them being Catholic. Protestants think it's God's approval of them being Protestants. <laughs> it's nonsense. Amen. It's cannon fodder. It's atomic ashes. It's a wrath of God being built up to explode. Exactly right. You listen to me. I'll tell you the word of the Lord. Amen. Look at us. Look at the world. Look at our nation. We're joining in with the UN. What's in it? A bunch of ungodly 
And we with the docility not even to let prayer be offered before our sessions come in. Did I just not read here? How can two walk unless they be agreed? God doeth nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. How can two walk unless they be agreed? When we've got Mohammedan, Buddha, atheist, ungodly, selfish, everything else in it. You think, uh, you think God could dwell in something like that? Well, you say, that, well, we're in alliance with them. we got all the Western protection. They had all the nations around them in protection. But that prophet said, yeah. God will destroy you. The very God that you serve will destroy you for your foolishness. Amen. He'd say the same thing this morning. He'd bawl from the White House plumb down to the poor farm. He sure would. He'd blast them with the word of God. He certainly would. That's the way of a true prophet. <laughs> Look at us, the churches. Oh, we are the great Holy Roman Catholic Church, spoken the Bible to be a whore. We are the patriarchs of the fathers of Protestant churches, all united together and called, it's called the World Council of Churches. Prostitutes of the whore, the Bible says. Amen. That's exactly what it says. Mm -hmm. And yet we think now all the churches are going together. Mr. Collins, a friend of mine, brother uh, in California, uh, Arizona there, your, your Elmer. Elmer. I said, well, I guess you're going to some fine little Methodist church that I got out of it when they joined that council of churches up there. I said, God bless you. You're nearing the kingdom, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Dogma. Depending upon the association with man. And with their man-made doctrine and leaving the word of a God. Amen. What we need is a prophet today. Amen. Blast that word in there. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Yeah, they, they take safety among themselves. Oh, we joined. We Pentecostal, sure. We joined the World Council of Churches because in there we have fellowship. We'll win them over. Like a woman going to the bar room to get drunk with her husband to win him to God. More like the husband going with the wife these days to the bar room to get drunk to win her to God. Yeah. Nonsense! Stay off the devil's ground. When anything denies that word, I'm against it. Amen. That makes me against every organization because it's against the word. I want to make every believer feel that way. <laughs> well, they say, but remember, we've got. I got a big piece in a paper someone sent me from Arizona of uh, how this patriarch so-and-so the other day said Pope John the 22nd or whatever they call him had, is a fine man. He's the only man that ever talked on uniting the churches, the Catholics and Protestants together. Said it might not come in our days, but in the next 15 or 20 years, it'll be here. I thought, boy, you being a patriarch, you're prophesying and don't know it. <laughs> It's later than we think. The guy that wrote it to me wrote it on top of the page. It's later than we think. He'd been listening to the tapes too. <laughs> yes, sir. He said, it's later than we think. <laughs> said, Brother Brandon, didn't you say this years ago? I said, sure. <laughs> yes, sir. It's coming to pass because it's a word of the Lord. Amen. It has to. Sure. Yeah, they say, well, this holy patriarch, don't you think he ought to know something more than that? No, sir. If he denies God's word and look at it like that, he can't. I don't care how many popes, prophets, and whatever she got among you. If you're off of the word, they're off of the word. That's right. How could God ever bless such a thing as long as they deny the very word of God? How can he bless anything besides his word? Something that's contrary to his word, how can he deny it? How can you bless a cancer that's eating you up? How could you bless a, a electric wire that you're holding? You say, oh, hold me and burn me up. That'd be insane. How can God bless anything that's against his word? So get back to the word. <laughs> you bunch of preachers like hound dogs. No matter where you go out here and sell your birthrights for a mess of pottage to ride around in some Cadillac or something or some big high mansion somewhere in a big billion dollar church and all those things like that and sell out your birthrights and ashamed and afraid to preach the word of God to your congregation and say, why aren't you ashamed of yourself and call yourself a servant, a prophet of God? Yeah. Selling your birthrights for a mess of the world? 
What will you hatch out the same as Esau did? Oh, what a disgrace. And oh, a holy God that watches over His Word to vindicate it could not bless something that's against His Word. How, now listen, I know I'm running this a little bit late and I may be choking you to death. But look, I want to ask you something. How could a holy God who spoke His Word and said, Now, both heavens and earth will pass away, but that shall not pass away. Not one word of it. Now, how can he take something that's contrary to that and bless it? How could he do it? Look, he proves himself. He vindicates his word. He says what's right, not by membership. Look at Moab. Moab had his word too, Moab. Israel had his word. And Moab had a form of godliness with his word. They offered seven sacrifices, clean, bullocks, Upon seven altars, the perfect number, the perfect sacrifice. Then besides that, he took seven rams, speaking that they believed in the coming of the Son of God. And offered them up there with their high uh, archbishop, all their dignitaries, all their priests and high priests. Everything else stood around with their kings and presidents and what more. And offered this just as religiously as they could be. Against Israel. Amen. And there was Israel down there, a little bunch of... Renegades look like. But what was with Israel? God was in their campaign. Amen. He has proven himself that he was with them. Amen. See? No matter how many patriarchs they have, popes or whatever more, God cannot be with them until he proves himself with them. And as long as they're off of his word and denying his word, how can he be with them? Amen. No signs of the living God amongst them. How can God be amongst the UN when two can't walk without their greed? Now look here. There's a church of Christ, so-called, joined up with the Pentecostals. The Pentecostals say they believe in speaking in tongues. They believe in the evidence of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. They say they believe in this, that, and the other. They believe in signs and wonders. The church of Christ laughs at them and said, you bunch of ignoramus, that the days gone by. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? And they join together. What are they doing? They're seeking safety with one another. Right. Away with such stuff. My safety's in Christ. Amen. And in His Word, for His Word is Himself. Right? No signs of the living God. Not at all. That's what Jesus said. If I do not make the Word manifest, then don't believe it. If God doesn't speak and prophesy through me and say through me and do through me just what Messiah is supposed to do, then don't you believe me? Amen. Then a guy says that he is a prophet sent from God and deny the word. <laughs> God be merciful to such stuff. Amen. How can God ever do such? Let me ask this, is this now. I don't know when to speak to you again. i would be up to God. I was laying in food like he told me in that vision that time, putting it in the barrels. You might ask me, how could Amos foresee what was going to happen to them? Why, it looked good. Look, now look here. Now listen close now, because this is all on tape and it's go, it'll go worldwide. See? Now, how, look here. There was Israel. Their seminaries was in better shape than they ever was. There's nobody bothering them. They had their own religions. They, nobody said, you can't worship Jehovah. Go ahead, and said the heathen nations. Worship. We got an agreement with one another. <laughs> that prophet seen through that. See? So would a prophet today see through it. See? Go ahead. And Israel said, well, let us eat, drink, and be merry. So they got a bunch together and made them some creeds and organizations, denominations and things and fixed it all up. And their women just lived in luxury and sin out there. Boy, carried around in cavalrys and everything. Half-dressed little silk look skirts on. If you ever seen some of their, their history of them days, how they look. Oh, almost one-third as bad as they do today. <laughs> Not quite. Because <laughs> they couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, and how they did and carried on like that. And the kings and the priests and everybody else. Jesus said, you devour widows' houses, you hypocrites. Amen. He said it. Yeah. 
And all these things they were doing, that prophet standing there looking down upon that, that nation like that. No wonder his heart was torn out of him. Yes, sir. Now, you say, how did he know what was going to happen? How could he foresee it? How It all looked good. Why, they got plenty to eat. They got plenty to wear. They, they got their big churches. They're prospering. Money sold everywhere. Luxury dances on the street. Immorality. And everything else just going on. And everything's going fine. Just like America today. The television's full of dirty jokes, half-stripped women, everything else. Everything you see is just muck and sin. You don't have to look at the television. Just open your eyes. Look anywhere. Girls, boys, men, women, smoking, drinking them, Jezebels, calling themselves Christians, the filthy devils, calling themselves Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, and Pentecostals. No wonder it narrowed his eyes and he looked. That's right. All looks good. How can you save it if we're going to do it? How, how, look here, well, we, we got a million more. We, we got, we, our buildings are, our churches are so big, we have to build new churches. Well, we got so much money, we don't know what to do with it. Well, we just build the best places in the nation. The biggest churches there is. We own them and we still got plenty of money. Don't you think God's blessed us? No! You're off of His Word. Amen. And Brother Randy, you mean God's going to destroy this? Yes! Every one of them! Amen. How do you know? Amos, how did you know? Just like a doctor diagnosing a case. When he finds a disease that's on the patient, he knows what to do. Amen. He knows what that patient's got. He knows how far it's advanced. And he knows what's going to happen. And that's the way with a prophet, a true prophet. When he sees, I don't care what you're doing. When he sees sin advancing, it's an eaten cancer. Amen. And it's a, such Amen. an advance in the Pentecostals and all the rest of them, it can't come back. Amen. It's at an advanced stage. They're going to perish. That's how Amos could diagnose the case. He diagnosed it by the Word of God. That's how a, pro, a true prophet diagnoses a case and says to them, Women, don't you never try to go to judgment with Bob Hare. Amen. Amen. When you know better. Says to you, man, the rest of you preachers, denying the word and having a form of godliness and joining organizations that dodge the issue. Amen. When you know better, you look at the same word the true prophets would look at. Uh, the diagnosis of the case said death separation. Amen. Just like a doctor, he knows the case. He knows what kind of symptoms it's got. Look at this nation. When you say Pentecostal done... When the um, pot won't even let you come to church because you preach to the women about bobbed hair and the Bible condemns it. Right. So say something about here the other day when I was making up some campaigns Roy Borders was on the West Coast. They brought him together. A bunch of ministers about, oh, I guess 40 or 50 of them were had a great meeting. They said, Mr. Borders, I want to ask you something. So is it true that Brother Branham uses the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to baptize in? Mr. Borders, a very dignified gentleman, as you know, Brother Borders, from here. He said, uh, sirs, he said, uh, Brother Branham, when he's out in the campaigns out this, said he don't preach. He just goes ahead and prays for you sick. That's about what he does. He said, that's not what I asked you, said the presbyter. Does he? Now, they had the tapes. They know. He said, does he baptize in the name of Jesus Christ? He said, yes, in his own church. That's the only place he baptized in his own church. He said, that's, it. that's all I want to know. We don't want him. We don't want that heresy amongst our people. And the other day, when my... A good friend, Ed Dalton, got a letter from the Baptist church. He said, we excommunicate you from the Baptist fellowship because you have joined in the heresy of being baptized in Jesus' name. I like to stand with Paul. And what the world calls heresy, that's the way I worship God. Because it's His Word. Amen. <laughs> oh, sure. The doctor diagnoses a case. He sees where it's at. A true prophet diagnoses a case by the Word. Amen. What? A doctor diagnoses his case by the symptoms. Is that right? Amen. He looks at the symptoms. He sees what's the matter with the patient. He sees how far it's advanced and says, there's nothing to be done. 
And a true prophet takes the word of God and diagnoses the cases, throws the medicine into it, and the people throws it back in his face. What's going to happen? Perish, that's all. Pleasure-loving, world-streaked bunch of so-called hypocrisy. But that's the way of a true prophet. Oh, my. He sees the diseases. He's seen that they got away from the Word. He saw the Word, and he knew the results, what was coming. He's seen the luxury they was living in. He's seen the way them women is acting. He's seen the way them priests was doing, how they got away from the true worship of God and things like that. There's he had the, he had the answer. He said, that God that you claim you'll serve will destroy you. Why? You've not kept my commandments. And yet they thought he had. Didn't I just read it here? Second verse, fourth, uh, second chapter, fourth verse. Because I chose you to be the, of all the families of the earth, I chose you. And yet you refused to walk in my commandments. You think that little bald-headed prophet standing there with that gray beard streaking in his eyes, flashing fire, speaking to that bunch of priests and things and said, the God that you hypocrites are acting like you're serving, that same God will destroy you. You think you get cooperation? Amen. <laughs> um, uh, try him today and see if he would. No. But he what? That's the way of a true prophet. Amen. He had the word. He knew what it was. Like Micah of old, the little baby that had dedicated. I passed him a few minutes ago because I hurry up the time. But Micah, when he stood before Ahab, he looked at them. He knew the word. Micah spoke the word to them. Amen. Why? Micah judged his vision, his doctrine, with the Word of God. And he seen that his doctrine and the Word was the same. Amen. Because the Word said he would curse Ahab and he would cause the dogs to lick his blood. Amen. That's what the Word said. So Micah had a vision. That's, he was a prophet. See what the Word comes to me. And he prayed, Oh, Lord God, what must I do? What must I say to this bunch of preachers saying, Here's all the organizations, everyone in the land's gathered against me, Lord. Here I stand before the king. What must I say? And he went into a vision. He said, Go on up. <laughs> Go on. He said, But I've seen Israel scattered like sheep having no shepherd. <laughs> that... that District presbyter walked him, smacked him in the mouth, and said, Word, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, go when it went out of me, out of him. You know what God said? He let a devil go down and get among them because they were off the Word to begin with. The Bible said if they wouldn't believe the Word, He'd give them strong delusions to believe a lie and would be damned by it. That's exactly what these organizations and people of this nation's doing today, believing a lie to be damned by it. Well, there's not another name given under heaven whereby you must be saved. <laughs> Line up, organizational, so forth. Yes. Now, what do these other uh, what do these other prophets look at? They were prophets. Yes, sir. They were prophets. But if they had stopped and examined their prophecy with the word, if the Methodists would stop today and examine their prophecy, they'd never sprinkle another person. They'd receive the Holy Ghost. They'd baptize everyone by immersing in the name of Jesus Christ. If the assemblies of God would stop today and look at their prophecy, they'd come back to the Word. Amen. If the oneness today would stop and examine their prophecy, they'd come back to the Word. But you see, if them prophets would have stopped and examined their prophecy, they reason, they said, that belongs to us. So we'll go up to Ramoth Gilead and we'll take it because it belongs to us. Joshua, give it to us. But Micah said, that sounds reasonable. Well, that's what it is. You don't want to reason. Amen. You want to believe. Amen. What God said, don't reason nothing. Amen. What if Abraham would have reasoned? How would he ever left his land? Amen. How would he have been 100 years old still giving praise to God to go to have the baby by Sarah and her 90? Amen. Cast away reason. You just believe. You let the devil tell you, you know, Brother Bram ain't nothing but a hypocrite. Now, I, now, wait, let me see if he's, let's see if he's teaching right. Let me go back to the Bible. Don't, don't go, he won't let you do that. No, no. See? But he'll say something bad about me, which you might have a right to. Then you just keep getting that. Stop and start reasoning. Yeah, he oughtn't to have done this. He oughtn't to have done that. You start looking at me. Well, you just have plenty. And you can start looking at the Lord Jesus. You can find plenty. Look at him just a minute. I'm going to put each one of you a minister. Now, we're going to forget he ever was on earth. 
Here's a boy that's proven the whole nation over that he's a, a bastard-born child. His mother had him before her his father was ever married. It's proven. Now, they're not going to the Word. A virgin shall conceive. They're just going to what they hear. Mm-hmm. An illegitimate child. Didn't they tell him he was born in sin and try to teach them? And, see? And look at what he was doing. He was actually tearing up every church there was in the country. Was that right? Amen. Organizations, everything else. What was he? Just some overgrown boy going around like that young fella, go to nomination. Tell me what church you belong to. Who is your father? You say, Joseph's not your father. Joseph is not my father, he'd say. Well, who is your father? God's my father. Well, you fanatic. That's exactly what you say. You being a man and saying God is your father, if they would have examined it by the word, Hallelujah. Don't you see what the Word was to be made flesh? Amen. They didn't examine their vision with the Word. Amen. That's it. That's what's the matter today. You don't examine your visions with the, your, your prophecy and your doctrine with God's Word. Amen. Somebody try to tell you the truth and you fall out with them. Just like Amos would. Amos did. You do the same thing. Now, look here. He's in this condition. Now, you would have condemned him. Perhaps that's right. If you hadn't went back to the Word. They do the same. They condemn him today. Amen. What a few women. You're in here. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Won't you examine your idea of your bobbed hair with the Word and see what it's doing? Amen. Why don't you do those things? Why don't you examine your baptism of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and that false trinity is so-called? which is nothing in the world but three offices of one God, titles. No name of Father. There's no such a thing as name Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Examine your baptism with the way everyone in the Bible is baptized. If you'd examine your thought with the Word, you you come back and you'd be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul told him to do. Instead of anybody else taught anything different, let him uh, him be accursed. Even if an angel come down. You know, a lot of times angels come down. Boy, how Pentecost eats that up. <laughs> how about when St. Mark was standing there and here stood a great bright being stood before him, a man who baptized in Jesus' name, who believed in the Holy Ghost and kept the Word, and the Romans kicking him out and doing everything to him, trying to get in their dogmas and man-made doctrines. That man stood! Yes. One day in his power, the devils had come to him and tried to talk to him. He wouldn't pay no attention to him. One day Satan come like, a, like Christ. Crowned, golden slippers on, stood there and said, Don't you, blazes of fire around him, said, Don't you recognize me, Martin? I'm your Lord. Worship me. Martin looked at him, something wrong there. He said, Martin, can't you recognize me? Said, I'm your Lord and Savior. Said, Worship me. He said that three times, and Martin looked around, he seen Christ will be crowned by his people at the coming. He would be wearing golden slippers. He said, Get thee away from me, Satan. <laughs> Boy, wouldn't Pentecostals eat that up? Boy, a bright, shining angel. That woman come down to Chicago where I'm going and said, Brother Bram, the ministers up there said, if the angel of the Lord told you baptized in Jesus' name, they'd accept it. But this, that's your own thought. I said, if the angel of the Lord said anything contrary to that, it wouldn't be the angel of the Lord. If any angel says anything is contrary to this word, let it be a lie. And if a man tells you, a messenger from God says he's from God and tells you it's right to be baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, let him be a liar. Amen. If a man tells you it's all right for you to wear bobbed hair and things like that, it's your order to wear a hat in a church for a bonnet to be a covering, let him be a liar. Amen. The Word of God, the truth. Amen. Any of these things, it's against the Word, let it be a lie. It's a Amen. Word, it's a truth. It'll stand. That's the reason Micah could know that his prophecy come from God because he was with the Word of God. Yes, sir. His vision banked up just the same as the Word of God. Oh, if Amos is here... You'd stay with the Word. That's right. But you see what's the trouble today? With us, it's like it is with them. I'm fixing the clothes. The trouble with us is like it was them. They had been taught off the foundation. Yes. Jesus said, You have made the Word of God a non-effect by your traditions. And that false baptism, that false sign of receiving the Holy Ghost. Some of them said, Shake a hand. Some of them said, Speak in tongues. I've heard devils speak with tongues and shake hands too. Yes, sir. No sign of it. 
Now, look, all these things like that, all those things, see, you get off the Word of God to teach those traditions. That's right. Now, uh, he would have to take you back to the Word. But we have, our teachers today has taught people off of the foundation of God's Word. Now, listen close. That's what they've done That That's what Amos is telling them. The God that you claim to know, He's the one's going to destroy you. Now, we have taught them off of what? The foundation of the faith that was once delivered to the Pentecostal fathers. <laughs> yeah, the Bible. Called a false purgatory. Called a false baptism. Everything false, 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 separating from the original. If you don't believe it, come back to the Bible and take your purgatory and take your Father, Son, Holy Ghost and sprinkling and all that stuff and come back and see if it's scriptural. That's the way. Find out if it's on the foundation. See, they're off of the foundation, which Paul said that the Bible, the Bible speaks that the, the, that the church of God is founded upon the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets. Amen. The prophets and apostles has to be the same. Sure. What? We went off of that foundation of the Word to denominational foundations. Listen, now I'm closing. Put on your spiritual hearing aid. Listen. We've got off of the foundation of the Word and on the foundation of a denomination. How long could I stay on that? Another three hours? Amen. Off of the foundation of the Word onto the foundation of worldly pleasures. Yes. Worldliness. Yes. Immoral. Yes. Creeping into the church. Off of the Word onto creeds. That would take me three weeks to preach that through halfway. And four comments right there. Off of the Word onto the denomination. The denomination of Word, as soon as the, the church denominates, it's off the Word right then. Then but one thing, come right back where it left off and go again. Come back onto the Word. That's right. Repent means to go turn back. About face. <laughs> You're going the wrong way. <laughs> All right. Denomination of pleasure. Denomination of wor- uh, a foundation, I mean, of, of pleasure. Foundation of worldliness. Foundation of creed. And all that together it hatched out of immoral corruption. Amen. Spiritual corruption. He being a true prophet, he would see in us just exactly what he's seen in them. If he was standing here on this platform today, and I'd say, Brother Amos, great prophet of God, you fearless one, come here and take my place. He had preached this word. He'd have to. He's a prophet. All right. He would preach it just exactly the way it's written, just what we're saying now. All right. He'd be seeing them what he's seen us. Immoral decay. Just look, friends. How many here in this present church here now sees that the world's in immoral decay? Amen. Why, we know it. Well, what's the matter? It's off the word. That's right. All right. Amos never blamed the government. Did you notice him here when you read it when you go home? He never blamed the government. He blamed the church for electing such a government. Mm, you politicians, let me let that grind in you a while. Mm. Here and across the world, where to go? The church elected such a thing as your own. wonder if we haven't done about the same thing. Let's say it's a good government. Government can't build a house on a rock when the people elect house on a sand. Amen. Can it? Don't say our government, our government. It's you, the nation. It's the people. How can we? Minister said to me, he said, Brother Branham said, Look, I know you're right in that. But said, if I would preach that, my denomination kicked me out, my people run me out of the church. Said, I'll never preach another sermon. I said, Preach it anyhow. Yes, sir. It's God's Word. You're responsible if you're a prophet of God. True, you'll stay with the Word. If not, you'll stay with your denomination. Depends on where you're from. Look, no, sir, we cannot build, the government can't build a house upon a solid rock when the people are voting for a house of pleasure on sinking sands. Look what we want. Let's just take a minute now. Or I hope it don't wear you out. But... Let's look what we want just a minute. I can't pass this comment. It's no. 
Look what we want. Look at our television. That's what we want. We want some of these comedians to stand up there and turn all kind of dirty jokes, and we stay home from prayer meeting on Wednesday night, or the preacher let out early so that you can go and see. Some old filthy, dirty, five or six times married. <laughs> Prostitute, cracking dirty jokes, sexy dressed and carrying on like everything, and you love that better than you love the house of God. It shows what kind of spirit's in you. We permit, we the people, if the people of this nation would write letters to our government, say there'd be a hundred million letters flying to that government, stop them filthy programs that have to do it. We are the people. But we, the people, want filthiness. Amen. So that's what we get. On, Look at the radio program. Oh, my. Turn Rock of Ages into Twist. <laughs> Old Rugged Cross into Swing. Rock and Roll by him. Old Rugged Cross. Yeah, sure. On our radios. <laughs> Television. All the tough here not long ago, them hoops. Them little girls. Everything. This is immoral as they can get. That's what we love. What's it sponsored by? Beer. Whiskey. Cigarettes. The money of the nation. What do they do? Take their tax money that should go to the government for taxes and pay for the dirty, filthy television programs they put on. The Pentecostals used to wouldn't go to them dirty, filthy picture shows when he had such plays. The devil put one on you, put the television in your house. A way of a true prophet is pretty hard, but let's stay with the truth. Yes, sir. Look at our billboards. Women standing out with cigarettes in their hand. Every little Jezebel in the country. I went to the other day, I seen a strange thing. There was one woman that uh, come over to the school out there to get the kids when I went over to get them that didn't have on a pair of shorts and did freezing weather. Every one of them with a cigarette. As soon as they get there and stop, they didn't have a cigarette. They light it right quicker. See how I'm getting along? <laughs> Holding that hand out the door like this with a cigarette in their hand. And you say something to you, oh, they blow up. Sure. You say something to Ricky or Elvis or one of them out there, they'd shoot you. And the government would back them up because they're only teenagers. <laughs> oh, that's all right. They, would, they didn't understand. They're teenagers overlooking now you see what a true prophet means? His way. Look at these filthy dreamers in the churches with their denomination. They'd shoot you right in the back. That's right. Amen. Amen. The only thing that keeps them doing is the mercy of God to the message has got out. Amen. The devil would kill you if he could do it. Amen. Right. But the message has got to go. I, the Lord, will restore. That's right. Hallelujah. I'm able of these stones to rise. That's right. All right. Our picture shows our billboards, our pleasure-loving sinners calling themselves Christians, people who call themselves Christians, pleasure-lovers, lust-seekers, women in moral dress, men looking at them, whistling at them, calling themselves Christians, going out. Well, they've even got, they've even got, uh, it's a great thing in Florida, California, if they have big clubs now, all the men get together and throw their keys in, and the women goes in and gets one of the keys out of there, and ever who it is takes his wife home. They live a week, then come back, throw the keys in again. See? It's clubs. Bastard born children and everything else. Hog eat hog, dog eat dog. What's the matter? It's because they've left the word. They don't know what decency means. Out here, the little tight dresses on and things like that, and man lusting after him and think that they're decent. You might not have done nothing wrong, sister, but let me tell you something. You're a tool of the devil. And the judgment bar, thus saith the Lord, you'll answer for committing adultery. And your soul will be gone. You know better. You know it now, anyhow. Um, our whole setup is corrupt and decayed. It's our people what they want. <clears throat> like a good man of the house. Well, if a man was a good man of the house, blaming your government. That's what sends their boys out here and makes cannon fodder out of them. 
Right, because our own corruption. If we love the Lord and serve the Lord and vote the right kind of government and everything else, it would be a wonderful place. That's right. We'd have no wars. No. God's our refuge and strength. Send our boys out and kill them up and butcher them up and everything else. It's because our own action has brought it to pass. God said so in the Bible, and He don't change. He's just the same. It's our own people's want. Like a good man in the house. What if he's a good man? He wants to do right. He wants to live for God. And he's got a pleasure, immoral, loving family. What's a man going to do when his wife wants to dress with shorts on and wear sexy-looking clothes and get out and act like a Jesse Bell and his daughters and all of his kids and all of them, his daddy's his boy he raised up and loved and pat and kissed and put in the bed and prayed for him, then up and said, my old man's crazy. All he thinks about is the Bible. What can that man do with his family? That's the same thing in our government about his, his people here. Don't blame the government. Blame this bunch of backslidden churches Amen. for putting such things in their politics as they got. They want it. That's the reason they vote for it, and that's the reason they got it, and that's the reason the judgment of God's up on them, and they're going to reap what they sowed. Amen. They're sowing now, and they're going to reap later. You watch. Oh, we're mad stricken. Oh, yeah. Trying to buy our way into Russia. Trying to buy our way with communism. Amen. Trying to... Why, money, you can't buy these gifts of God. Amen. There was a guy, Simon, tried to do it one day, and Peter said, you perish with your money. Amen. We're playing the part of Simon the sorcerer. Yes. Trying to buy a gift of God. Just come back to the Word. Come back to God. Come back to Christ. Amen. Amen. Then don't worry about communism. We'll vote the right man, and we'll have another man like Abraham Lincoln. George oh, Washington, somebody that was a real man. Hallelujah. Don't blame that government up there. Blame ourselves. Yes. That's what Amos would say. And that's what any true prophet of God would say. Yes. If he knows the word of God, if he's a true prophet, he knows the word because it comes to him. Hey. Israel, in their alliance with, with their made enemy, first they had to get away from the word of God before they could make an alliance with their enemy. Yes. And before we could ever make an alliance with our enemies and things, we have to get away from the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> Same now. Letting Rome take over. <laughs> well, we're doing it all the time. Sure. She's tucked the government. She's taken the places. She's taken the people. Now she's taken the churches. What are we doing? Sitting still, agreeing with them. Oh, it don't make any difference for it's this way or that way. It's all God. Anyhow, you oh. poor, miserable, backslidden, so-called prophets. What's the matter with you? Mm -hmm. They don't know the Word about God in these things. They don't study the Word. They don't realize. They say communism is going to take the world over. No, it isn't. Romanism is going to take the world. And it's doing it under the name of Christianity. did in the Bible Jesus say it would be so close to the food of the very elect, if possible? What we need today, let me close in saying this. Now I'm going to close. What we need today is another true prophet. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We need a man for the Word of God to come to. Uh, yes, brother. He'd be rejected and run out and cast out, but he sure blacks the hole. He, uh, <laughs> uh, he sure throws such seeds to the elected would find it. <laughs> That's right. Amen. We need a prophet. We need a man who the right interpretation of the Word comes to that God speaks through him and vindicates the Word to make it through. Oh, That's what we need. Amen. And, brother, we are promised one. <laughs> According to Malachi 4, to restore what? The faith of the people back to the Bible. Amen. We're promised one. He'll do it. Amos knew. Yes, sir. Amos knew. Israel are ungodly lovers would soon destroy them and their ungodly lovers of the day will soon destroy them. Amen. The very denominational creeds and things that they bound themselves into, you Pentecostals. That's the thing's going to destroy you, your creed and denomination. You're binding yourself right up here take the mark of the beast and don't even know it. Pulling it right over your eyes. Sure it is a boycott. What are you trying to do? You belong to this or you don't belong, see? You just wait. Just give a little, just a little bit longer. Then you say, I'll get out of it. And no, you won't. You're already in it. <laughs> You're already marked. <laughs> You're caught with a mark on you. No matter. Esau weep bitterly when he know better, but he wept bitterly trying to find a place to repent and couldn't find it. 
You'll stay there then. Now's the time to flee. <laughs> Amos knew that their ungodly lovers would soon destroy her. For they, the church, had left him, God, and his word, the way of life. They got away from God's way of life and made their own. Oh, the word was a stumbling block to them. And it's the same thing today. The word of God is a stumbling block to the so-called Christian. Tell him about the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell him about the Holy God that'll make. You know, well, he say, "Well, we got the Holy Ghost, then why he still wearing bobbed hair? Why still baptized name Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Why still believe in these other things that you believe and acting the way you do? Goes to show your fruits prove it. Jesus said, "By the fruits they know." See that just goes to show you you're talking about something you know nothing about. Yes, sir. Yes. If Amos is here, he'll cry against their systems. Do you know that? Now, I'm going to read one verse before closing. The eighth verse of the third chapter. And let's read. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Listen. In closing now, I want to say this. I'm sorry to have kept you half hour late. But look, I want to say this. I'm a hunter. I hunt. I'm glad God gave me something like that. The other day when the gun went off, I went right back down to see if I could shoot again. I don't want it to scare me. If I had a wreck out on the road, I wouldn't quit driving a car. If I walked across the floor and stumbled my toe on the carpet and went through the window, I wouldn't quit walking. See? No. No. God gave me a clean exercise. That's Satan. That wasn't God. See? That was Satan. Now, I know the spiritual application to it. There's three of us in this room right now that knows what it is. And it'll raise a hair on your head, but I wouldn't tell no one. See, there's these three people for a confirmation. Now, it's all all right. It's all God knowed all about it and forewarned it and everything else. And we know it is partly my fault. And I had something I'd, I'd tuck up for a man one time when I should not have tuck up. I could have just shucked the liver out of him. See, instead of doing it, I had to pay for it. So then, so we, that's all right. It's me and it's forgiven now. And we go on. See, yes, Amos. This eighth verse. If a lion roars, who will not fear? I've hunted in the African jungles. I've been around where lions were. He's the king of the beasts. I've laid out in the jungles at nighttime and hear the squawking and the hyenas, the laughing and the howling and, and the different animals. And then some of them hyenas will make, just curl your blood when they scream. And there was leopards and whining and everything else and beetles and monkeys and baboons and uh, thousands of times, thousands of squeaks, squawk, walk everywhere you can hear all kinds of things going on. But let a lion roar. The beetles they even keep still. It's a deathly hush. They keep still. What? Their king has spoken. Amen. The lion roars, you will not fear. When God speaks, who can keep from prophesying? When God speaks, the prophet cries. You know what I mean? The true prophet cries. Friends, he has spoken. Then they let every creature of his kingdom take heed to what he said. If a lion can recognize that there's something wrong when he roars, everything of his kingdom hushes. They listen. Even the little beetles, yet he's in the kingdom of that lion. That blood shrilling howl of the hyena, he shuts up. That elephant there that could pick up the lion and whirl him around with his wheel, wheel, and let a lion roar, he'll shut up and stand still. Let the Cape buffalo who can snort look like blow fire from his nose. When a lion jump on him, wouldn't even harm him. Let the rhino with his seven tons of armor piercing, this big snoot, let a lion roar. He stops in his tracks. What's the matter? His king has spoken. See? He wants to hear what's going to be said. 
When God speaks, the prophet cries. Amen. And then let his kingdom take heed to what he's saying. God has spoken. Let every creature of his kingdom listen to what he's saying. Let's pray. O Lion of the tribe of Judah, rise up and roar. Thou art roaring in this last day. Your eyes are narrowed. You're looking down. You're seeing the sin of this so-called Christian nation and world. You're seeing the sin of this nation when it's been bought with precious blood. You're seeing how the denominations are waiting over your word. See how the false prophets are lying. God's truth they're denying. Roar, O Lion of Judah. Let your prophets cry. When God speaks, who can keep from prophesying? It's a word of God coming out of the Bible. Moving up through the prophet. How can he hold his peace? He would he blow to pieces? Oh God, let your prophet roar, Lord. Roar out your message, God, and let every creature of your kingdom take heed. May they stop. May the women stop and examine themselves. May the man stop and examine himself. May every preacher that listens to this tape stop and examine himself. For the lion of the tribe of Judah roars. And the true word coming to the prophets, speak, cry out, repent and turn back before it's too late. God, I commit the message on the tape and in this visible audience to you this morning for trusting you'll approve it and call every son and daughter of God that's under the ever hear this tape or under the sound of the voice, they'll back to repentance before it's too late. And I believe, Lord, if you sent Amos here, he'd cry the same thing. For he could not cry, but if he is a prophet of the Lord, he's a sender forth of the Word. He's sent forth by the Word, with the Word, and he is the Word. Now, Lord, let it be done in the name of Jesus.